Taurus, it is me, Stormy, and here is your horoscope for November 2018. And Taurus, before we jump in here, the blog is up. I'm very, very excited about it. Click in the description box down below. I've got all of the transits that I came up with and the aspects for November and it'll be happening all through 2019. It's a feature that I really like because it gives you an opportunity to grab your chart and if you don't have a chart, make sure you get one, okay? You can get that in the description box as well. And look at where all of these different things that are maybe not always addressed in the general are happening in your chart. So check out the blog. I'm so excited. I'll have many more posts going up there as well. All right, Taurus. So first of all, November is a moving month. There is a lot happening. We've got sign changes. We've just got movement all month long and that's kind of the feeling that I have for you Which is so funny because I'm a Taurus too and I'm like moving Why would I want movement like I kind of like where I'm at? It's cold outside. I feel good and warm inside, but this is a good month of Transition now the big news happening this month One of the pieces of big news is that Jupiter is going to change sign move out of Scorpio He's been there for 13 months. We've been getting deep. We've been expanding secrets have been coming out of the woodwork in our society And now Jupiter is going to move over into the sign of Sagittarius So we're going to expand expand our horizons look beyond what we knew question our faith question our truths What are the truths in our life? There's some travel on the agenda all of these good things become a Alive and aware when we are in that Jupiter energy. But for me, the big exciting stuff that we've got going on this month, the big ticket item is that the North Node of Destiny is going to make a move into the sign of Cancer. First time in 19 years it's coming back around. This is exciting because here's the thing, Jupiter moves, we get some things that may or may not play out, right? The North Node of Destiny moves, you guys, and we will, we will fulfill where this moves to in our charts. We will. It is absolutely one of the most gorgeous movements that I see that we have in astrology. So I can't wait to share that video with you, but it is happening this month. As well, we've got Venus coming out of retrograde. Thank you very much. And on the exact same day, we've got Mercury going into retrograde. So lots happening this month. Let's break it down and talk about it, okay? So right at the beginning of the month on the 6th, it's a very busy day. That north node of destiny moves on out of Leo and moves into the sign of Cancer. So for you, this is going to light up the third house. Wherever the north node of destiny goes, we will fulfill what's happening here. So whether it's writing, whether it's speaking, studying something, teaching something, something with a sibling you've got going on, transportation, traveling, these are things you're getting ready to fulfill. Now exactly how they'll look will depend on your personal chart. So if you need some help, seeing that come get a reading with me or with anybody that you trust now the north node of destiny is going to move into cancer in that third house which means across the street we've got that south node of destiny that is going to light up the ninth house space over there with saturn so you're going to be releasing some things in the ninth house watch the north node video when it comes out i'll get it all into that but this is a beautiful energy because you know you have got some things coming in the next year year and a half that you will be fulfilling. On the same day, Uranus is going to backtrack. He's already um, retrograde, but it's going to backtrack back up here into Aries. Now, this particular retrograde, retrogrades always send us backwards, right? So where I feel like this is beautiful for you because it's in the 12th house space is really you're going to look back over the habits that you've had, right? You're going to look back over things that have been in this secret house. Uranus came blowing through there, your 12th house. You did a lot of work. You did a lot of clear out. This is the thing, Taurus. It is your very nature to be kind of an emotional hoarder. And you have done some clean out. So now, as, as um, Uranus is retrograding back through this 12th house space, look at the progress that you have made and look at at the habits you still need to break. If there is something you have still got going on, it will be in your face. You'll be conscious of it, likely, even though this is a 12th house space. What's that habit you need to break, right? What's that thing that you could still use this time until you get to March of 2019 to let some things go, to work on something? Are you researching something, right? Is your creativity just on fleek? The fact is Uranus came and shook up this 12th house space for you secrets hidden enemies spiritual things things with institution addictions right i'm a taurus oh my goodness i've got a situation with food right and i got to look over that over this last few years 
What is your thing that you're ready to leap forward with and have a new experience with? Love this energy. Now on the seventh, we've got a new moon happening in Scorpio. This is gonna light up that seventh house space for you. This is relationships, but this is a new moon where we're planting those seeds of intention to take something new forward. And it's in Scorpio, it's intense here. This is a wonderful, wonderful time for astrology. This is a great time for metaphysical things. It's a great time for healing, for intimacy. It could be that you're working on something um, in your um, the depths of your relationships, right? Like maybe something has come up during Venus retrograde and now you're getting to look that over, look over the value you'd like to reset for relationships. Really, we've got the sun rolling around the Scorpio energy for the most of the month. So relationships are a very big focus for you this month and you get right here the opportunity with this conjunction to set them anew. I'm very excited. You could also have new relationships or new people coming into your life new business partnerships. I like all of it. Now on November 8th, we've got Jupiter moving out of Scorpio, moving into the sign of Sagittarius, lighting up your eighth house space for the next 13 months. So Jupiter, wherever Jupiter goes, he's going to expand, but he doesn't want you to just expand. He doesn't just want you to expand your mind. He wants you to expand out. He says, hey, take this and get out in the world with it, right? So the eighth house, we've got sex, we've got intimacy, we've got... Um, metaphysical things. Maybe it's your time to come on out here and be an astrologer. Hey, welcome to the team. Tarot, whatever it is that you study, maybe it's time where you're going to investigate or you're going to, as a psychologist maybe, or a new coach, you're going to bring something out to help others investigate. Jupiter could really do some good-ish to your partner's finances right now because in the eighth house we deal with joint things, which could be partner's money as well. Now I do want to say this, because Jupiter Jupiter and Scorpio we saw was phenomenal at bringing some of these secrets to the to the surface right Jupiter is also very effective in helping you develop wisdom through experiences. So if you have debt, Jupiter in this eighth house could bring it up and then you need to handle it. He's also going to show you how to handle it. So this is an energy you could start seeing happen here right away. But I will tell you, in this eighth house space, wherever it's time for you to broaden your horizons, broaden your experience, this is what you're going to work on for the next 13 months. And Jupiter, through various interactions, is going to help you do that. On the 15th, we see Mars moving into Pisces. Now, this is not Mars's favorite position. He does not care to be here. He is running and trying to move and groove and go quickly and get things done. And he is running in water because it's Pisces. He is not comfortable here. So it's a very slow and not very active placement for Mars. But where I think this is delish for you is this is lighting up the 11th house space for you. Have you needed to slow down, Taurus? Reconnect with the, some friends. Friends. Maybe what's happening is you've had an expansion in your business, in your social circles, in your life, and you're like, oh, I need to collaborate with other people, or oh, I'd really like to volunteer. Oh, I have got to catch up with that friend I haven't talked to in a very long time, right? Whatever it is, the social zone, maybe I need to get my socials together. I'm out here trying to have a business, trying to move into a different direction, and I don't have any social things going on, right? This could definitely be that. Now, I will say, the big global voice is really active right now. So it could also be a time where you find yourself finding a way into bringing your voice up into social, um, political things. So keep me posted if that's you and you're kind of coming out of that political closet and starting to have a little bit more of a presence. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, now, the one thing I will say, because Mars is also about desire, what you want and what you're moving towards, you may not be as clear because Pisces is that energy that doesn't always have clarity, right? Not to say that Pisces people are super indecisive, but Pisces, Mars in Pisces is not always clear. So if you feel like you're not, you're moving towards something, but you're like, I'm not sure if that's the thing that I want for sure, or you feel a little hesitance, just roll with it, okay? If it has to happen right now, now, today, it's probably fear talking. Give yourself some time, okay? 
All right, on the 16th, we have got Venus coming out of retrograde over there in the sign of Libra. So for you, this is your sixth house. So from the 31st of October all the way until now, you've been working on reviewing, re-editing, looking at the value of your sixth house, your exercise, your diet, your daily routine, things with work for sure, freelance work. If you um, own a business, maybe you've been dealing with things with um, employees, right? If you have a job, maybe it's things with coworkers. Um, for some of you out there too, maybe some things were happening with your pets especially if you have smaller pets you could have been dealing with these kinds of things but either way venus being um direct here in the sixth house i think you find a resolution to something that you were looking at at that time because you were looking for the value now venus comes direct and you say aha I spotted my golden nugget of what would make this valuable in my life, and now you're prepared to take some action. On the same day, Mercury is going to take a retrograde, so we get a direct and a retrograde all at the same time, right? We're going to be moving and dancing this month. As Mercury comes um, retrograde, goes retrograde, it's going to be in the sign of Sagittarius, so up there with Jupiter, okay? So Jupiter's direct. He's just coming to your eighth house. He's like, hey, let me help you expand. Mercury, which is of our mind, our community, communication, my decision making. Mercury is so entirely business savvy that up in that eighth house, working with Jupiter energy, lighting it up, whatever situations you've got to make decisions about in that eighth house, Mercury flipping backwards actually gives you beautiful insight that as he comes out of retrograde, I think you'll be able to move this eighth house energy forward with a lot more clarity. Now, one of the other things I want to say is that because it is Mercury, be prepared to re-look over, re-edit, reconnect with people, look at these projects again, all of this good kind of stuff. Maybe before you expand it out, expect miscommunications, right? Mercury is our planet of the mind. When he flips backwards, everybody gets affected. No one is exempt from a Mercury retrograde. So everyone will be flipped backwards. There could definitely be miscommunications. During a Mercury retrograde, the thing that I always ask people to do is have an abundance of grace with other people and grace is the slack the universe cuts us for being jerks okay so cut each other some slack during the mercury retrograde all right on the 22nd the sun moves into Sagittarius your eighth house is busy there's a lot happening up here so I'm telling you whether it's debt partners money things with insurance any of these kinds of things sponsorships you could have people wanting to invest in you this area gets very busy for you on the 23rd we've got a full moon happening in Gemini lighting up the second house place now the second house place for you the full moon first of all means that something has to be ended acknowledged or adjusted right so we're gonna have a shift here now in your second house space does this necessarily mean um, that your money is going to dry up I'm going to tell you what when there is a full moon in two certain signs which I'm not even speaking that into the universe my finances dry up every single time for four weeks so is this something that could be happening if this is in your chart 100% I believe that it could be but it could also be an opportunity for you to relook at your money how are you using your money where do you need to rebudget where do you need to rethink putting your own talents out into the world right something needs to come under shift now I do think and I just got this kind of piece of information that if you have something financial you've been working on you may get an answer about it at this time as well which I think is phenomenal all right and as we end the month on the 24th here we've got Neptune going direct in Pisces so lighting up your 11th house now here's the funny part about Neptune direct things are real unclear when Neptune is retrograde right but as Neptune comes direct here um it's almost as if in this social zone, in this collaborative zone, in the friendship zone, you get clarity. It's like, oh, that's how I take that thing from just being this vision over here and making it an actual reality. The dream becomes reality when Neptune is direct. So we've had Neptune in retrograde since June. I am ready. I know I have some ideas over here that are about to land on planet Stormy Grace. So I can't wait to see what is happening for you guys as well. It's going to be a beautiful month, Taurus. Check out the blog if you need a reading. I mean, it's almost time for 2019. We need to look and see what's happening for you with all this movement. If I can help you, please reach out and just let me know. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next month.